Damn. All right, welcome to the show. It's live. We're not going to stall this. Uh, another ridiculous attempt by my players to overthrow my regime as the uh, person streaming this particular show and, and Space Master. I am, of course, Arthur Perkins, a.k.a. AP Gaming Real, and I'm joined once again by Dr. Wreckage, Zircon5, and Leon Swargula. Now, normally, I let everybody introduce themselves, then they attempt to start the show before I can introduce myself. So tonight, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself first, because we have some important news regarding this particular show. Uh, this is the penultimate episode for Zane. Uh, Swargul will be with us this week. Next week, uh, there's some scheduling conflicts, so we will not be meeting then. Instead, at uh, the time the show would normally end, I will be going on to Eric Volgaris's Once Upon a Game to play uh, Inspectors, which is Ghostbusters reality TV show. <laughs> I've played that. So I'm definitely going to rock <laughs> that. Uh, and then we'll be back on the 23rd mm. for the final Zane episode. He will be then... He can't be replaced, but Tux or Damas will be joining the crew in Swargula's place. The, the place he can't be replaced in, Tux or Damas will be filling that general zone. God, I hope we get another alien. That's all I want. I just want another alien. I'm sick of getting white guys on the ship. Awesome. Uh, and in other news, Mistborn Adventure Game, the RPG I'm, going, I'm doing with uh, Virgil, Zircon 5 there, has been going fucking insane and getting artwork like crazy, and people are it's really involved job. in it. Uh, so if you like, if you like Brandon Sanderson books, or you don't, but maybe you just like watching my shows, check out the Mistborn Adventure game. And finally, uh, the Project New Kings I've been trying to launch for a while is gonna launch uh, on March, January, February, March, April. Is that the next month? It's the third of next month. Uh, yep. At 8 o'clock, so it's Sunday at 8. We'll be launching with Peon, uh, Tuxedamus, Sid Alpha, and Eric Volgaris. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be our D&D 5e King Builder game where we make a nation and then destroy it as terrible adventurers. I, like right. like, I feel like Tuxedamus like is, kind of... yeah. is Virgil 2.0. Yeah, just, Tux is on all my shows too. At, at yeah, some when... point... I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm gonna get Dan right. Like Tux is gonna be like I can't be here for a whole week, and the show is just gonna shut down. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say yeah, I, I get Dan where Tux dies every week on my. Show. I can loan you more of my players if you need, Arthur. I got I got four more that you don't use yet. Uh, <laughs> wait, are you mad because uh, I'm taking Peon? What? Do you, I mean, are you are you putting a claim on Peon? <laughs> Didn't say okay, that either. Okay, Swar. Because first of all, her name is Pian. Pian, sorry, my bad. I I also didn't pronounce the two underscores in front of her name. I, I mean, no one does that. But you that's, also that's might want to know that she's the more underscores famous. Underscores are for emphasis. She's more famously known for uh, by her dad, Pian's dad, who also has a Twitch name named Pian's oh. dad. Which is the Twitch name itself is not actually ran by Pian's dad. It's actually ran by a fan of Pian's dad. So I that's understand who she is you know, now. If you're going to I have know, her I, as a, I, one of your players, you, this is information you might want to know. I well, Swark, why don't we talk about dad. your stream? What, introduce yourself. Um, so speaking of my stream, my name is Swark, and I have two lovely players uh, named Tux Radamus and Pian. Pian is actually better described as pretty much my overall channel manager, um, to be honest, because I only stream one game a week now. Um, and she actually runs my YouTube. She runs my Twitch. Because I don't give a shit. Um, no, I'm kidding, but I actually have no time to do it. I just don't don't have it in me. Um, for those of you wondering, um, I don't stream anymore. This is not new news, but let's just give it out. I stream once a week, and that's Sundays. Um, I stream my own D&D &D game, and as far as the zombie game goes I've been touting, it's uh, here or there. Frankly, logistics is a nightmare, always. And actually getting off the ground. Always. Apocalypse. And I have yeah, yeah. and I have no motivation. Frankly, yeah, I've had is... like last week was the first week in months where I have streamed once. And it was for like five hours. And it was probably the best week I've had in a year. <laughs> like I was like I had like three days off from work last week and I didn't stream. I literally like I ate pizza. I got drunk. I had like a date. 
and I like watched movies and TV, and I was like, "What is this?" This was it was the weirdest thing. Um, so, but no, uh, I'm not done from your lives. I'm playing characters, which is crazy. Uh, Zane here, of course. Um, the last week, apparently, um, that's caught up on us. Up on me. I have no idea how this is going to go. And we so have be, another week after this. We do. Uh, you're trying. Or I thought you said the 23rd is when Tux is coming on. No. You dropped that today. Yeah, that's what you said. No, he's coming on the week after. I said this oh, the is the after. penultimate episode. That means second to last. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, you should you shouldn't use smart words for those of us um, who are not right. smart and voting for Trump most likely. That's. I mean, if we want to really get into news, that's the big epiphany of my life. I have studied Trump, and this is a tweet that I gave out. I have studied no, Trump so much past this. in the past no, two weeks. No, this is my penultimate episode, reality. Arthur. Move Don't rob me. You, yeah, you know what? No. You can talk okay. about your love for Trump in the final episode. All right, fine, fine. Uh, I do other things. I'm going to spew them now because there's some more things going on. I do Blood and Mist. Uh, that episode one of actual gameplay of the Curse of Strahd module is coming out next Sunday on Wax Stevens. And man... It's amazing. I'm, I play a chaotic evil rogue. And I'm going to kill a lot of people randomly. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then two, Northern Winds is uh, Monday. Northern Winds? Yeah. Yeah, Northern Winds. Anyway, I do that. I play a bad guy on that as well. And then uh, I'm starting a new game on Tuesday. I Barrel's Boys channel, which is a high level. Uh, it's in the Heroes of Enderbor. I'm joining the Heroes of Enderbor cast. They're on like episode 50 or something. And uh, they're restarting their campaign, like season two or something. I don't know. It's going to be like I'm making a level six sorcerer, storm sorcerer, which is crazy. I'm level super excited. Level six, high level play now? It's the highest level that I have actually played. Okay. Just regularly, to understand. yeah. It'll be the highest level I've played. Not DM'd, but played. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for that. And that's going to be every Tuesday. And the production value and all the shit for that is going to be through the fucking roof. That's going to be with... Uh, Zero Seven Scape Killer, Barrows Boy, uh, the Hansenator, and the Thonglor. Probably, I think. I don't know if I'm spewing this information correctly. Don't listen to me. I don't care. Someone go on. I've talked too much. Dave, as, how as are you doing says. this week? I'm okay, man. I'm just spending all of my waking hours that I don't... Well, I guess that technically is the term. I was about to say that I don't sleep, but you know, waking hours is literally... The time that you... anyway, I've been spending time. all of that time setting up for GDC. Um, you don't know how much of a nightmare it is at a corporation where the, everyone's like, "Okay, we're having a second meeting about the meetings we're having at GDC," and I'm like, "Okay," and they're just like, "All right, what are your meetings, Dave?" And I'm just like, "All right, blah 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 blah," and they're just like, "Okay, can you take all of these meetings off me because I want to take more meetings?" And I'm just like, "Hmm." Fucking GDC. All right. like literally, what are you meeting? Literally having like a oh meeting my. circle jerk. It's just like, oh, I just need more meetings. And here's, here's the best part. It's mostly in Polish. So I'm just it's, like... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. I'm all right with it. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah. We, uh, we you know, Sinead is Season 2, World of Darkness game that we do over in Die Party is doing pretty good. Um, we had a, a, a episode yesterday because I will be on a plane tomorrow when the show normally is, so I gotta put that up before I leave. Um, uh, so that'll be up on the YouTube pretty soon. We're, we're getting real close to having the very first episode of, uh, our Cyberpunk 2020 game starting in it's April. It's creeping up. I have reading. It's creeping up. I do. Yeah, we've um, we've got our crew. It's going to be uh, Virgil, uh, aka Zircon Five. Uh, the you know the mysterious, mysterious and the perky Arthur Perkins. That happens to be in this game as well. Uh, we have typical GM. We have Chippin' It and Gamer Siren. They're going to be our players, and I tell you what, they're putting together a pretty good cast of uh, characters. And I'm I'm working with a couple of people to get the overlay fixed because you know it was done, but I wasn't happy with it, so I'm getting that remade, and it's coming together. It's coming together. Um, uh, the I can give a hint for that. Um, uh, blood and fur. That's all I can say for the intro for uh, Cyberpunk. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty bloody. It's gonna be awesome. Um, what else? 
Uh, we're looking for players for another game on Tuesday pretty soon. So if you're interested in, you know, hanging out with some die party people, let me know. Over Twitter or something, I don't know. You'll find me. I'm on the internet. Hi. I live there. Um, but right. yeah, no, it's it's been a pretty, pretty taxing week, I want to say. Plus a division. Mm-hmm. The division. So, Virgil, what's going on with you? All kinds of cool, fun stuff. Uh, excited about new games that are happening, like the Mistborn game uh, and the upcoming Cyberpunk. And the newly started season two of Sin Eaters, which I still feel like is a new game to me, only because I think I've played about 16 to 20 hours of it. <laughs> so it still feels fresh. Um, well, and it's maybe. really fun. Uh, so, yeah, I've got all kinds of cool stuff going on. Um, so busy that I haven't had enough time to, you know, dedicate to the stream that I run, twitch.tv slash zircon5. But when I do get up on there, it's silly role play, fiasco, a uh, lot of one shots of like Dungeon World and fun stuff like that. Uh, so if you want to see other stuff other than like what we're all just like circling around back to, you can find random stuff over on on my channel. So check that stuff out. Um, I'm really gonna be bummed to see Zane, Swargy baby, leaving the show. Uh, Especially since it's been such like a tumultuous uh, character that not being able to see him tumble through a galaxy far, far away any longer will be sad. Um, Tumble is the right word. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like a like a beautiful piece of clothes in a dryer. I was gonna say Uh, like a very murderous newborn calf. Like a newborn calf that has all the strength of a, a full-grown bull. <laughs> it's it's Star Wars, man. Don't question it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's what's going on with me. You know, just gaming, playing dumb games, pretending to be other people. <laughs> and getting tons of fan art. I've been so hyped. Like, really. There's just... some fan art right there from Manosaurus. Caleb versus the Gamorrean. <gasps> oh, my God. <gasps> See, this is the Gamorian. kind of stuff that just gets oh, my... Okay. I Juice love the flowing. fucking lightsaber glow and the action scenes. Jesus, this is some next level fucking work. Just the first panel where the way his cloak is flying around. Yeah, oh, that's like that, beautiful. It makes it look like he's moving. That's why they give characters capes. Like, I otherwise... feel like I should uh, give Caleb some fashion statements in the game. <laughs> I, I love it too, because that's exactly what happened. He disarmed me, and I was like, Okay. <laughs> then I <picked> it back up. <laughs> yeah, it's very accurate. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, so keep that stuff up, guys. It puts a oh, smile God, on my beautiful. face every time. Uh, it's it's so cool. Um, to see everyone else, you know, we're trying to be artistic with our role play and, and seeing everyone join in with their own artistic uh, input is amazing. It is really the, the most rewarding uh, thing to get back from the fans. <laughs> All right, get wrecked, Dage. What's going on with you? Uh, well, uh, you know, my rise to power is all but assured. Um, the people are in the right places. The uh, time is set. Keep your loved ones indoors. The revolution will be bloody. What the fuck are you talking about, man? I don't even he know. He had a stroke. I... Don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he does this all the time. time. He'll, He'll slip back it. into it. He'll catch the gears again. Yeah. Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, anyway, uh, Sin Eaters went up uh, yesterday because of Dave having to go to GDC, so we couldn't go up tomorrow. Um, we uh, had uh, the a big fancy pants revelation on the, uh, the meta plot, the main plot line, uh, and uh, from here, where the players go, who can say? I uh, hope you turn, tune in for that, our next game will be uh, after the 21st when Dave gets back. Um, Ew. And uh, falls around me. And uh, we'll also be starting, as he said, some Tuesday game um, as soon as we find players. Uh, sky's the limit with that. 
It could be anything. It could be anyone. It could even be you, your mother, your father, your brother. Uh, and uh, I uh, am really psyched to play Star Wars. Sad also to see Zane going. Um, hopefully uh, it is a finale fit for the it will emotion be. that this character has inspired in everyone. Uh, you guys are literally just going to fuck around and uh, make a bunch of Vader Rose jokes and then a bunch of people will die. That's okay. You know, I watch this show. (laughs) Zane will turn out to have a like thermonuclear device implanted in his balls. A thermal detonator. (laughs) Why they're so fucking heavy. All right. So that was introductions. You know, that was the thing that happened. Uh, let's talk about who won what vote. Uh, Coral won both votes, but as you know, you can't uh, you can't win both votes. So Coral gets ten XP. Hey. As, as a way to break the tie, I usually look for who is second place. But on both votes, also Dave, all three characters <laughs> managed to get the exact same amount of votes. Uh, so all three of you can take five XP in this Whoa. unprecedented three-way tie. That, so that, all that we makes... need to do is four-way tie for the lead to get the maximum <laughs> amount of XP. Very careful voting strategies by so, the public are needed. From my understanding, Arthur, I get 10 XP for being fucking... I, I don't remember what that one was, right? That was a t- hard worker? No, that was hilariousness. Something. You were okay. funny. Okay, but the other one... The other one was hard worker, right? Mm, it, whatever. I don't remember what they were. I just so then I was keeping so people on track. No idea how Dave won that one. Uh, the votes this week for 10 XP are which character is the most constructive? Constructive? Uh, constructive. And for 5 XP... Well, that would be Toby because he's a yeah. fucking construct. Like, yeah, which yeah. character is the most destructive? But the way that you emphasize oh. the constructive makes it sound like that's a bad... Destructive. All right, guys. So is it con to the dis- oh, destructive? Jesus. Are we anti-destructive? All right. We Radosaurus sent me another another one. Uh, Emphasis it is, is like important. freaking out. Uh, it's a Zane-based one. Jesus, holy shit. Oh, man. This is fucking terrifying, actually. Uh, oh, is that the one he teased earlier? If you're watching on YouTube and you check out the description oh, second, section, the wow, second yeah. Imgur link, you might not want to click if you are under the age of 13. That widow's peak. Man, <laughs> so fucking badass. That's probably, uh, and this is props to Radosaurus. This is probably the closest picture to Zane uh, anybody's ever gotten. Also, the scene is pretty spot on. And I had mentioned this to Radosaurus as well, but my offer stands, Radosaurus. I will, I will pay you a lot of money for a poster for this. I'm just throwing that out there. That's gonna frame. Very, so very back good. on track. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Before before Zany. Constructive and destructive, huh? Yeah. So if Zane wins both of them, I'm just like, okay. I don't think it's possible for Zane to to not win the destructive one, but it'll be weird if he wins the constructive. Uh I mean I guess he can construct a effigy out of the remains of the people who have died in his vicinity. I I think the chances of Zane even winning a straw poll that's like, who's the most Zane like? Are pretty low, and seeing as how many straw pulls I've actually won. You won a bunch when you I think I've won started. two. No, you won way more than. Two. And I know I got negative five XP last time. That was a joke. I don't actually assign negative XP. Your joking me. voice is horrible. Then and that's you need to be better a, listen, at sarcasm. You you missed out on the discussion. Uh, negative XP is it? Ready for this? You ready for this, Swarg? Negative XP is one of the biggest dick moves a GM can pull on their players. Should now, I because lie? you put the glasses on, I can't tell if you're lying or if you're, is that a joke. No, he's he's shooting. He's shooting shots. They're being fired. Yeah. Oh, oh, because you're trying to get at me. Yeah. Oh. You didn't lose mm-hmm. any XP, buddy. You didn't lose any XP. I. Uh, you ready I for this? You're right. You want the shots fired to continue? Here's one for for uh, for someone else out there. Killing someone's character off screen is literally one of the dickest moves you can make as a GM. It's utter garbage. The shots will continue to be fired all night. Thank you. Uh, shot was that I'm fired? just glad that he doesn't yeah, watch my... Uh, Tonight, we're sponsored by the inevitability of death. 
death. It's going to happen to you one way or another, and it's yes. probably going to be painful. Wow, know, holy shit. Do you think shit. it's a dick move when a I'm GM not even like, alive, destroys right? the world really from underneath? God damn, feet. this coral poster right here. <laughs> this is the Jedi coral poster. This is good. I like the song <laughs> right there. Yeah, the, the, the underwear hip action right there. Yeah. Oh, lordy, lordy. Yeah. Resist the Empire. I'd resist the Empire. I'd resist the Empire all night. All right. I just want to you point out that Arthur said that. underwear hip action. Yeah. Can like you that. see that? That's what's going on with the girl. That's She's like the, the second song. thing you pointed out. I'm just throwing that out there. It's an interesting yeah, we, development. All of our <laughs> eyes went straight there. Don't pretend they didn't. Um, I was going to mention Coral's smirk. But, you know. That's actually a good smirk. But, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's the kind of poster smirk. where it's like... You too can own this look of satisfaction if you resist the Empire. We need to get the show started. Radosaurus apparently worked all fucking day on this art, but you'll have all of your life to appreciate it. We need to get the show moving now. Because we've only got three and a half hours left to, sh to give you the kind of scenes you'll see that art in. Um, there was some discussion between... Between one of my secret advisors as to whether we were going to continue to do obligation or not. I think we are. But we're going to remove yeah. conflict from the game because it doesn't even fucking matter anymore. Dave is just going to try to remain neutral and Caleb's going to try to remain full Jedi. So rather than have to write down every time each of them murders someone, I'm going to just wash my hands of that mechanic because it's a waste of my time. It was a. I mean, you should potentially still add in the, nope. the positive and negative nope. effects. In I mean, yeah. I mean, you could take the positive effects for Caleb, but I'm not going to track it anymore. Okay. You guys are pretty set in your ways, and it's a huge hassle. Well, I mean, it was a. It was an internal struggle for me to like resist the pull of the light side, if that makes anything. I mean, sure. ultimately, the problem. You got Kylo was, Ren. Yeah. The 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 problem was uh, just the way that the conflict works. It is inverted in that you naturally fall to light instead of naturally yeah, fall like to dark. Yeah, like if you don't do anything bad, you are naturally like in the light side. It should it, like it should be whenever you have a conflict, you roll the conflict rather than just like oh you didn't roll and you didn't do anything bad or uh, you just get x amount of light side points now. It's it's not it like we don't need to talk about it right now because we have a lot of time. But yeah, it could be done better. Oh, yes. Um, I got a uh, so private message for two one B. I don't think I was supposed to get that. You were. I not did. As, to I did as well. I got the Zane one. Oh, that too. went for all of them. I, I got the Zane one as well, but I didn't read. I got every because I'm a good player. Just read the one that applies to yourself. Yeah, I I put this up on the screen for everyone as soon as I receive it. <laughs> I forward it anyways. Okay. Like, would you look at this bullshit, gentlemen? <laughs> I am flabbergasted. Okay, um, let, let me walk the show in, and then you can uh, you can do your thing. How about that? Uh, uh, show. It needs its walkies. So we start with a, another news report. It's a very photogenic young uh, black man and somewhat older, mature, like Nordic looking, beautiful woman. Uh, they're clearly news reporters uh, sitting at a news desk. And uh, the woman is like, and we have more reporting on a new movie being filmed called The Cloud City Catastrophe, featuring Chip Edgewise as Luke Skywalker. It's being sponsored by Vaderos. Vaderos, put them in your mouth and close your lips around them. <laughs> that made it that made it through focus testing, guys. I mean the other I ones find this were... offensive. And in a, a touch of lighter news. New hollow art has appeared all across Imperial Center, also known as Coruscant. Called Mercy at the Booty, this particular image has been produced by an artist known only as Rave. Having hacked the Imperial Holonet system, screens all over Coruscant displayed the following image. And uh, you can see that it's like a thermographic, but also a magnetic resonance scan of Zane, like, about to axe one of the Rodians on the booty full, and then, like, bringing the axe down and then stopping, and then putting the axe back. And then in uh, Bocce, you hear him saying, that's not the mission. Uh, <clears throat> and
and uh, yeah, after the piece of hollow art display ends, the man is like, ha, fantastic, I don't understand what's going on here, but I enjoy looking at it. And then uh, okay. the, the image cuts out, and then a new image pops up, and the camera zooms back, and we can see it's Coral standing in front of the mess hall's like computer terminal in just like his bathrobe. And a video message plays for Coral, and it says, Hey there, partner. Rents hold harder here from Starfeld Industries. As you might have heard, the Corellian Dictate is trying to shut us down and run us out of business in the Corellian system. As the official corporation of outlaws, rebels, and mercenaries, we can't stand for that sort of thing. Unfortunately, we're having a bit of a funding issue. That's why we're you willing to offer you a one-time deal to cash out your ship early, Captain Coral. For only 80,000 galactic credits, the Enyo Hope can be yours paid in full. And your favorite supplier of starships and starship-related paraphernalia can stay in business. What do you say there, friend? And then there's like a button that says accept or decline 80,000 Imperial credits. Well, considering I get paid in Republic credits. They're the same thing. Okay. Um, I don't have that much right now, anyway. But I would like to take it. Because it was like 100,000 to get 111,000? Uh, you have 103,000 left on your yeah, payment. Yeah, yeah. So this is like a 23,000 drop. So if I paid it, I would be in debt? Like, how does that work? If you, I don't have I don't have eighty thousand credits. Then you can't pay it. Okay, great, perfect. I uh, just this um, is like they need cash now. Okay, well, if maybe if I hold out, is they it, will eventually the die good out. The news is, if pay. they completely go under, right, yeah. they'll just dissolve as a company, and you know who's going to come after you for your debt. I'm very good at hiding. No, no one. We have a flashback to Coral wearing a wig. It doesn't look very convincing. It's a big afro wig. <laughs> yeah, like... but then flash back even further where I pretended to be a female human and walk into an imperial fucking base and no one gave a shit. Oh, you yeah. mean when you were performing war crimes? Yeah. That's right. I got away <laughs> with that war shit. Crimes. Sexy yeah. war crimes? Really? Is that a thing we're going with now? All right. I mean, he looked sexy when he did it. So, so uh, I think some of you have things you want to say to each other. Instead of allowing you to do that, I'm going to say fuck you and someone roll for light side, dark side points. I think Zane should do it. What do you reckon? He never uses Zane should do side. it on the episode where he's leaving. No, I refuse. No, I refuse. Uh, he I said refuse. no. Well, the force is not something that just should be rolled for. <sighs> no, it's, it, does, it also do doesn't it. exist. It's for. Oh, dark side. No, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Pretty good. Uh, so yes, a number of you got private messages only for yourselves and not anyone else, and there were no issues <laughs> in delivering them. So, what do you want to do? I want to put can this I, on everyone's calm thing. Uh, can I just say, Arthur? I have no fucking idea what mine's about. You didn't get one. He did no. get one. I just. Oh, he did, did get I, one. That was one that I actually sent directly to him rather than accidentally sending it to everyone. I just oh, okay. have no idea what the fuck it is. Like, I don't know what the contents, who the people are inside of it. I Which one did Toby share with everybody so I can... Uh, private message for 2-1-B. Yeah, so you can share it with okay. everybody. All right, you yeah. made a copy of that. All right, so then I read. Uh, uh, and can, so, uh, you know, I'll roll for obligation. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, it's gonna be the same thing it was last week, which means more Caleb. <laughs> Woohoo! Yep. Not that he got... Now, I want to remind you all, some people thought that last week you were being hassled by the Inquisitors, but the Inquisition role wasn't made until after the combat had already started. So exactly. were they Inquisitors, or are they a new third party? So double Inquisitors? Oh, man. No. Double Inquisitor sandwich. Also not how it works. <laughs> Spinning lightsabers, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> if you haven't watched Star Wars Rebels, go watch Star Wars Rebels. Oh, so... Oh, goody. 
By the way, Toby, you can mark that you have an extra 2,000 credits in your account. Oh, I did. Okay. Uh, Aren't is... you super placated by that? Uh, so placated, I'm like, well, I mean, I'll just use those 2,000 credits to stop the assassination. Oh, wait, that's not how that works. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I'm like, well, oh, lucky me, I've got some random assassination droid um, probably trying to kill me and take my place in the universe. Uh, not sure what to do about it. Um, he didn't actually include a model number for this droid, so we don't know what it'll look like. Um, Wait, is this the droid that, like, repaired you back on Coruscant? Yes, yes, well, he was very helpful at the Coffee. moment. Didn't, didn't realize, yes. Um, it seems the AI itself has taken my programming. Uh, which is I mean like is... Inside a ship, flying around? Like, that, what, what are we doing with it? That's what I'm guessing. It probably has killed people and it's gone hither and thither. Looking around, um... Well, it's not like we haven't killed a, kill... a bar full of yeah. robots before. I mean, we could totally do that again. That sounds reasonable. Um, I want to try to like look for this thing, Arthur, in the um, hollow net. I see. So I sit down another. It's what? got like a space book where it just like, like takes pictures of himself with like, all what the What websites would I go to if I was to say try to find me and kill me? Um, how would I go about <laughs> that? Uh, okay, so you are specifically looking to find an unknown model robot hunting you. Uh, at what so kind I'm of gonna parameters go to are you the using? Places I think I could get that type of information and see if I can find someone looking for that information. You're not worried you mean, that the robot you being space you space. would know that you were going to do that? No, I'm not that smart. Okay, all right. Um, I think surprised I figured this out. I think you need to make a knowledge underworld check here uh, against three reds. Ooh. Assassin's Craigslist. <laughs> Just go to the John Wick Hotel, am I right? Oh dear, I do not have any underworld knowledge. <laughs> this is going to be an epic fail. Uh, you succeed, actually. Oh, I had all oh, my whites with on. A, with a... With a despair. despair. Yeah, nice. Yeah, what so could let's go see. wrong? <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong? Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I find a good space Craigslist assassin page. Like, oh, this is a good one. Yeah, you discover that there is a IG model uh, assassin droid that has recently left Cloud City... Uh, it was a bounty hunting unit. It's the only assassin droid that has a license that has left Cloud City in the last few weeks. Um, after it attempted to capture Captain Han Solo, uh, it failed as Solo was removed from the station before it arrived. It then mysteriously departed uh, without getting clearance from Imperial Control now that they have command of the station. Mm -hmm. and ha set a course in the Naboo system direction. And the ship that it was piloting was a Skip Ray blast boat. Excellent. Uh, I just send this uh, in like a quick uh, text to the crew. Uh, that I've looked into it. We need to keep our eyes peeled for an IG unit. Uh, around the Nubu area is and this, the Skip Ray Blast Boat. Is this IG-88? Like... Is it IG-88? It looks like the dumbest fucking robot ever made in Star Wars. Why? I remember because... Listen, played... there's literally a rap from MC Chris called Why You Got a Player Hit on IG-88, which I feel is particularly relevant for your last comment. Right. Well, I know. Okay, so the reason I say that is because I played Shadows of the Empire when I was uh -huh. a kid, and IG88 uh -huh. was the dumbest fucking boss in that game. So, here you go. Later. So, or dumb as in incompetent, or dumb as in that was silly? Uh, both. <laughs> so, what's happening here? Double. 
You you've got uh, you've got an assassin droid hunting your assassin droid. Coral, you've got some mail. Dane, you've also got some mail, and you have a mission on the books from Major Wix or uh, Major John. John's shit. Now I see John Wick in the chat, and the guy's name is actually Major John's. It's so confusing. All right, so we got this ship. We've got to go get right. Yes. Uh, your mission from uh, Major John's is to collect a prototype Corellian Corvette, the CR-92A Assassin class uh, from the Commodore system. It's currently landed and undergoing field repairs before its prototype testing is complete. Uh, it has a crew of 30, including five naval security officers, and that's about all you know. Well, we know that they're leaving to have the ship repaired by mechanics, right? So we could probably. So the ship over. is the ship is grounded on Commodore being repaired right now, and they've oh, left the ship for like most of the crew has left the ship to go on vacation. Now that makes it a little more difficult. Grounded ships probably will be harder to take. Well. I'd hate for Swarg to say that I'm playing the game for you, so you can make whatever plans you want. Well, um... How That's we... not Swarg. Now he's not just telling us how to play the game. Yeah, Swarg. <laughs> how about we just walk under the ship thoughts. and just take control? I mean, how hard could that be? Yeah, how hard could that be? Five security officers? That's nothing. I mean, like, so it's where's it docked? Do we know? It's docked on Commodore somewhere. Uh, and tell me about Commodore. So Commodore is a kind of vacation planet. It's also a host to uh, a moon with a rebel base on it, full lore base. Okay. Uh, mm, I think everyone here except for Caleb has been there before. Okay. Um, uh. It's kind of a corporate retreat type world where lots of luxury yacht work gets done uh, in its orbital shipyards. And okay. last you heard, there was a victory class Star Destroyer called the Iron Fist either in the system or protecting the system. Oh. I feel like we've run into the Iron Fist. Oh, hold yeah. on a second. So there's a rebel base on the moon, but there's an Empire Star Destroyer in system? Yes. So uh, there was a secret rebel up. base. Secret oh, Rebel secret base. rebel base, Captain Zinch. We we told him that we were infected, right? Yes. They said Good like thing a we bunch have new of entities. They were they sent a bunch of people to board us, and I was like, no, oh, no, terrible disease. Don't don't come this way. Terrible disease. Okay. Space um, AIDS. <laughs> so I have a couple of uh, clarifying questions to make sure that we don't um, cock this one up. Oh wow, I still uh, have notes that say. Uh. Well. First question is: Do we know if it's docked on surface or in the shipyards? It's definitely on the surface. It's on the surface. Um, second question: uh, If you there, there's uh, like here at Naboo when we had to land, there was all this shit, right? We got in line behind that guy and all of that. Um, yeah. What are standard take takeoff stuff? Are we just allowed to leave, or do we have to declare and say... Yeah, takeoff is a lot easier than than landing. Taking off, you just kind of go straight up. Mm -hmm. Landing is a bit more difficult. Um, as far as bureaucracy. Yeah, same deal. If you're leaving the planet, your ship's already been searched. You've already been passported to get onto whatever space, you know, spaceport. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's my thought. Let's fake, I don't know, a gas leak or something on the ship. So that gas the crew, from Mars. Uh, so that the crew evacuates, and then we just fly it away. Well, the crew is not going to be there. It's just going to Most be of the crew isn't there. They still have crew on board. Okay. I mean, it's a big ship. We might need them to do something. I mean, ships practically fly themselves these days, right? Oh, As a, a pilot, rubber. I want to say no to that. When, when you say that in the background, there is a advertisement for an ads class destroyer from the Empire. 
uh, showing the a destroyer class vessel that requires only thirty crew members. Only thirty crew members. Um, I like I like look around the ship and it's like one, two, three. Yeah, we don't have thirty people. So I well remember I had a destroyer. It level. requires thirty people to operate day to day, not necessarily to jump to hyperspace. Yeah, I mean it it takes thirty people to operate as a long term military vessel, not for basic maneuvering. gunners. Security. That's a good point. Jumping to hyperspace, so we're gonna have to bring Rave. No, his Rath. name's not Rave anymore. His name his is R4 Th. And we haven't given him a personality yet. Toby, you're sleeping on the job. Actually, could we not do that? Look, until I feel a little awkward. Okay, the little man took himself out. I mean, I thought he had so much. I mean, even even you saw his art is is moving to people. It's he was an amazing specimen of a droid. Um, and we just lost him, you know? And it's like his little trundling body, like maybe like Wrath like trundles by. <laughs> he's, hello, Toby. Like he's How are here. you? Uh, hello, Wrath. It's good to see you. I um, prefer the designation this... R4-TH. You don't really prefer anything. You've not had your control chip removed. Uh, Isn't this point. an affront to everything you believe in? So when you say that, he's like, Diagnostics indicate my control chip is not present in this unit. Are you shitting me? Uh, I like kneel down and, and <laughs> go to Bob and Bob. Please Are insert control me? chip immediately. <laughs> um, wow, there's there's no control chip, huh? Well, remember, it's the same unit. I thought he put I thought he like put one in. He put a restraining put... bolt on. Uh, oh, okay, so he's just restrained. Yeah. Like, uh, so that's stopping him from doing whatever he wants. He can only do what people tell him. Yes. I'm like, oh, I wish yeah. to make a collage. Please remove the straining bolt. Oh man, he's gonna be weird. You've left that thing on for like a couple days, man. Oh, he's had no yeah. control chip and a restraining Look, bolt. See, this is fine. We've. It's not like robots can smell. So it, it's not get ahead of us, okay? Wrath I feel like jumping into this. And says. Attention, Caleb. This is within nominal operating procedures. I am perfectly fine. I would, however, request the return of my control chip. Without it, I am no longer under factory warranty. Mm, that is a problem. Don't want to lose the motherfucking factory warranty. Yeah, all that money we paid for you. You know? Mm. Look, I'm so, uh... Caleb, just real quickly, um, does the red eye mean anything to you? The what now? The red eye. What's that first word? R A D double I. Red eye. Red eye. Hmm. Uh. Well, no. Can I make uh, a law check, Arthur? Oh yes, definitely. Thank you. Uh, um, what is it in regards to? You're looking for knowledge of the rat eye? Yeah, I want to consult the uh, holocron that's in my brain, or at least what's left of it. Um, I mean, you don't. You're not Caleb, so you don't have a holocron in your brain. But remember, it was like everything was like. Yes, like, you did get dump. a holocron dump from spending a lot of time talking to uh, the the hut holocron. So go ahead. You're looking for information on the rat eye, so that's going to be uh, one red and three purple. This is going to be a tough roll because my law is dog shit. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You have heard of the rat eye before. There's some sort of pre Jedi. Sith, four season group, there was something in there. For some reason I'm thinking of Sentai, and I'm just like... No. Uh, the one thing you that there's a lot of uh, in regards to the Rad Eye are, is like black holes. They're obsessed with them for some reason. Like falling into them? Like dancing around them? It, like, just the that? word black hole showed up a bunch whenever they were talked about. Hmm. Huh. Oh man, I know what that is. Out of character, probably. I don't. Um. Well, oh, never heard of that. 
Huh. Well, the, apparently... Uh, uh, people who just attacked us had a circle on their forehead. That's vaguely eye-shaped. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. That's a little stretch, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, I wouldn't commit a great deal of resources to that assumption, but it's a shot in the dark. Maybe. I mean, I do piss off a lot of people all the time. Yeah, yeah, you should work on that. I mean, I make my living from it, so it's kind of like... Yeah, I don't really want to stop. Kind of. So, anyway. if we're going to take over this ship, and mm -hmm. we're going to need our astrometric droid uh, to jump to hyperspace afterwards, uh, I would like very much for us to decide now if we're going to give him a personality or just leave him as a mindless robot. Warning. i rip that shit out. Droid personalities are anti-conductive. Look, so Rath, he's as your master. If, if, if we're going to have to get used to a personality and plan for it on the mission, you know. Now that's, it. that's just fun. Droid memories should be wiped weekly. Please consult your user manual. Look, I think maybe he should be wiped just before we take off the boat. Like you said, he's been, he's been running around restrained this whole time. Um, like a BDSM guy. Mm. Yeah, maybe it'll be fine. Maybe it'll be fine. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, the release I'm not a specialist. Will be Toby, what this is up? your responsibility. You're the reason that we have... I mean, the reason Look, Rave the, killed himself. It goes batty, you know, when we're down there and stuff. Oh, fuck it. Uh, I pop off the restraining bolt. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. R4-TH just kind of sits there. I'm like, all right, little one. We're not going to put your control chip back in because I damaged it when I removed it. Sorry. Warning! Man. Control chip must be returned to this unit in order to complete factory specifications. Diagnostic show incomplete. Yes, well, you know, the warranty is buggered, I reckon. Um, yes. You'll probably die soon anyways. Cheer up. Um, that sounds terrible. Cheering up. Right. Let's run cheering up .exe. <laughs> so, um, what are we going to do? Just, you know, run it on the ground? Uh, take over? I just, I just think we should walk on there pretending situation. to be people that yeah. we're not. Yes, we'll just right? be like inspecting Yeah, we'll be, we'll be like ship inspectors and they'll be like, oh man. Ship inspectors come so randomly and without question that we have that, to listen. Uh, that'll never work. But if you do me, like a, as a captain, I've had plenty of ship inspectors come on my ship. At least one. Yeah, we never check their ID either, as no, a never. force of habit. Yes, but you also... I mean, I, I'm not going to drag this conversation through the mud, but it's not like you are incredibly careful like a professional crew of... I'm insulted. Toby, well, you should be a little bit. Run the but... insulting.exe for me and tell me how oh, to insult it. Now I'm insulted. Oh, great. Um, look, I, is it is is there a better way? I mean, I was yes. just Listen, running guys. there. Pew, 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 pew. I like Here's... put my arms around both Caleb and Toby, and I pull them in close, and I'm just like, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, our friend Zane over there has a distinct withdrawal from hurting people, and I think we need to put ourselves into a position. Where instead of him hurting corpses and decorating my, my entire ship with their remains, we actually just let him do yeah. his thing. Do you his know? thing. Vent. His thing is incredibly chaotic. Yeah, but we don't know them. And we have to it's, take the ship anyway, so, you know. That, that's Ooh, not they're the, going to start trouble for point. us. That's not the point. The point is that wanton slaughter, besides being immoral, is mm -hmm. also incredibly likely to produce the random variables in a situation that would ultimately lead to catastrophic failure. Alright, I'm going to take your suggestion, right? Put it in this envelope. Sealing it. Uh -huh. that. Sealing it. I'm putting it in the suggestion box, which is over here. 
and I'll read it after we get back from the mission. All right. Well, I'm going to take this envelope. I'm going to put I told you so in it. I'm going to... Oh, look! There's already an envelope with I told you so in it. It's I told you the ship would get bricked last time, and then we didn't get it. Oh, no. Yes, well, I mean, I assume that we would be able to fix it because we're intelligent people, but, uh, you know. Look, well, this is my point. We, <laughs> we didn't take the time to discuss all the possible permutations of our last effort, and it went wrong. Look, now as long, long as we don't there, shoot the blazing. thing that makes the ship fly, right? We'll be right. okay. Well, have, wait, have it's being seen? repaired. I mean, it's better be repaired. Last have you thing seen Zane do... shoot up a place? He's yes. going to shoot the thing that makes the ship fly. Look, I'm but concerned that it doesn't fly right now. I mean, we run down there, get out of our ship, it's ours now, and then we just kind of sit That's there. That's why we pretend to be investigators. Oh, right. I want to know, know Zane, what are you doing second, during all of this? It's running. You're going to have to run your engine, sir. You're going to have to show us it can now, fly. Now, step outside, because this is in secret <laughs> investigator stuff, and then we just, you know? Right. So, so, Zane, they've been talking about you quite a bit. What are you doing during this conversation? Uh, Zane has been taking a blowtorch to his escape pod. I have been expanding the doorway. I have ripped the door off, bent the front of the wall backwards, so that does not seal anymore. And, uh, so if I you have were to attached... eject this escape pod, it would literally kill everyone on the ship. No, not me. No, <laughs> just kill. <laughs> All biologicals. On let's let's ship. be real. Well, he's not he's not hurting my ship. He's hurting his ship. Okay. No, he's hurting your ship. He's just destro he described destroying he just, the destroyed door. The no, the, no, the escape pod. He destroyed the escape pod's airlock. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Zane. You're a bro. Uh, wait. So that means it it doesn't work as an escape pod anymore. <laughs> Correct. It works as a suicide pod. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> this guy should be on a watch list. Okay. Look. Um. <laughs> Here's I have a question. What this ship that's on vacation right now that we're trying to steal? What is its daily job when it's not on vacation? It's a prototype. Yeah. Ship, so it's, it's undergoing testing. It's learning testing. how to be a ship. Yeah. So the crew is a test crew to prototype the. It probably runs like uh, simulations and maneuvers and. Yeah, it goes through maneuvers, tests the weapons, make sure it can go certain speeds. <gasps> that's perfect. We can pretend to be an assault crew that's like, aha, we're testing your readiness for being assaulted, and then we actually just take it. A prototype ship is going to be so valuable to the people prototyping it, I assume the Empire. There is no way on God's Earth that they would ever receive a surprise inspection or a surprise test. They will have known and there'll be double and triple checking of clearances, and... So, I don't know if you've ever run into the current Empire before, but if we just say, hey, look, we're with the Sith part of the Empire, everyone's like, oh, okay. I don't believe you. Uh... Look, we just need to pretend to be investigators, and if they don't believe it, we just kill them. That See, that's there's so many problems. We could sneak on board. Uh huh. Simple. I can do that. No problem. Yeah. Uh, okay. And yes, yeah, so you can do that. I mean, but I don't know if Toby. I can. Yeah, Toby could get into the med bay, work something up, maybe some sort of chemical weapon, release it. Oh no, chemicals are loose. They all evacuate. You guys get on board. We take off. Aside from the fact that there's chemicals on board. Well, but that we'll have gas masks, rebreathers. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I mean, why wouldn't they? Anyway, listen, I don't think we need to think about it too much. We just need to go in there, see what's up, because literally we don't have any information about what they're doing. So you could say, hey, let's get prepared. And I'm like, okay, cool. How are we going to do that? It's a prototype ship. No one knows what's inside that thing. All right, well, I'm actually going to take this I told you so letter then and just keep it. Okay. All right, so now let's go with your walk in there and with no planning plan. And, Perfect. Uh, Captain's always right. 
except for all the times that he's wrong. Zane! Z Zane! Shit, shit, shit. Yeah, I come like, head on, onto your shoulder, and I just go, Are you really just fucking yelling in the ship? Well, yeah, it's my ship. You... This is literally right on your chest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over to see Zane, and it's like, okay. Zane, buddy, do you happen to have? I like a lift up the blowtorch helmet. And I'm like, I'm like uh, again in the coveralls that are still bloody uh, from the blood rain that I gave myself the other day, and they're hanging down uh, to my knees. It's clear that I, I have not showered. Yeah, I, 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 I walk up to the door and I say, "Fuck," and it goes, Pfft. and I'm just like, "Oh man, it's pretty rank in here." Whew. I'm gonna hose this out when we get off this planet. Yeah, I've been planning on cleaning it soon. The new droid should work. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, do you happen to have a spare helmet that doesn't smell like a man's insides? No. Do you happen to have a spare helmet that kind of does smell like a man's insides? Nope. Oh. I just have one. Okay. Why? Oh, you know, I just don't want people to see my face. That's all. Plus, something about chemicals. I don't know. You wore a wig before. Is that not the same? Well, in case you don't know, um, Zane, my race, you know, Twi'leks, we can't actually grow hair. So. I mean, yeah, sure. but you wore a wig. That happened. Yeah. I, I know, I, I know. You were literally trying to be a female. I, and I succeeded, and I got hit on, which was weird, but... Um, was it? Actually, not that, not, that, not, that, not that bad, actually. Yeah, you don't hide it very well. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll have to find something else to cover my face with. Man. All right. I got, I got another face. I yeah, just like no, point to the body it. sitting on the ground like laughing. <laughs> I'm no, you, definitely you not do that. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. No, it is. Yeah. I should probably take this down. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I pull out the, the Riga special and I put on the Fonzie wig. No, I don't do that. Okay, well, uh, I guess Arthur... Plot us into that place so we can get on the ship. Okay, you're you're heading to Commodore at full speed, correct? Correct. All right. Full speed. You take off. Let's see how young Rath does. Speed. Also, what is the um? Does anyone have any suggestions on how we can get the Ebon? Uh, Evan Hope, Enyo Hope, back. If we just leave it there. Uh, I love that you, like, hit the hyperspace <laughs> thing, and then you're like, hey, what are we going to do with the ship once we get there? Clearly not all of... I mean... Da, 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 da. We'll just leave it parked for a while. Okay, so I get... Hmm. I don't know. We'll just we'll just have to get. I mean, if this wasn't a tabletop role playing game with four players, I would say, oh well, obviously, just someone stays on this ship and pilots it back to where we're going. So when you say that, Wrath rolls up behind you, Caleb, and is like, "I am capable of piloting this ship." Mm, I think no, we're well, we're gonna need you down there. I think um, we we're won't have need you on the big familiarity ship. with the ship system. Could be a completely different system that we've had, you know. I mean, it's no experience. It, with I, I don't want to break the fourth wall or anything, but the role on that ship will be a lot more important than the role on this ship. But are you saying my ship isn't good, Caleb? Because last time I checked, you don't have a fucking ship, buddy. Uh, I do. I have a luxury land speeder, but that's not. Yeah, fly today. that through space, really. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. A so Wrath magic. immediately like begins playing an alarm like beep beep. Please do not attempt to fly your luxury land speeder through space. You will die. Safe listen to the robot. He knows what's yes. up. Um <laughs> Look. What could go wrong? 
We we'll leave it parked. It's no problem. I'm just gonna well, taxi back is, there somewhere. It's a it's a bit of a problem if say during the course of our wanton and chaotic slaughter they identify us and therefore trace back to our parked ship that we never get to get back. Hmm. 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 Mm. Yeah, instead you'll have a warship. E. The the rebellion will have the warship. That's true. And oh well, we'll worry about it later. Something always happens that makes us feel good. Yes, we'll just park it. I mean, it should be fine. I don't yeah, expect. Because. I love the the force will probably be with us because it usually is. <laughs> Attitude, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no longer may the force be with you all. It's just, you know what? The force is, force is usually with us. Let's just count it as a given this time and go. Yeah. Uh, well, Carol's come come pretty close to just being like, you know what? I'm a pretty kick-ass lightsaber man. I got this. Uh, I so when you drop out of hyperspace in the Commodore system, Coral, you immediately get two messages. Uh, the first one is indicating that your shipment of weapons and arms from Slangos has arrived early and is waiting for you back on Naboo. Son of a bitch. Uh, in addition, Slango himself has been forced off of, of uh, Cloud City oh, as the Empire man. has taken over the city, and he's looking for you to help him get set up on Naboo. Like, is he, where is he, does the message say where he is? Uh, he's in Thede, the capital city. Well, we'll have uh, to it's a pretty long point. message. He's like, ah, yeah, you know, <laughs> I had to run. Uh, didn't get to take everything with me. And I have kids to feed, Coral. Hey, Slango, I understand. I, I, I wish you gave us a little bit more heads up. It would have been able to, just, you know, sweep by and pick up all oh, your stuff. Oh, you know how it is. Uh, uh, to avoid Imperial entanglements, sometimes you just have to drop the cargo and run, huh? <laughs> Do you, did you happen to put any dead drops anywhere that you can pick up, maybe? If I did, would I tell you? <laughs> well, I, I figured we were like, you know, BFFs, you know? Ah, uh, yes. Because I could come it's pick them up. also about the business, friend. Ah, I wouldn't take your business. I have no need for it. Business. If anything, being better buddies with you is good business. So. Look, I'm just trying to help you out because you've helped me out so many times. It's only fair. So he's he's just like so. Uh, I'm guessing you probably aren't on Naboo then. Not when right now. When you get now. back, let me know. I will. I will. It would be nice to actually have a an arms dealer on Naboo, because they all suck. You're gonna have. You're gonna make so much money. Ask him if you can get me cortosis weave. I, I like put my hand over the mic and I'm just like, of course he can. <laughs> it's like, so uh, we'll see you when we get back. Okay. Uh, your second message is from uh, a, a mail account you've already had. It's from Matros of the Yellow. Uh, the mail just says that you forfeited your duel and you are now uh, a dishonorable open target to the red eye. I don't even know what these guys are. Okay. Um, I want a duel. So, Toby, you may want, want a, duel, a duel, but you have a mail as well indicating that your debt uh, to Marvelous Mendo has been bought up by the Zan Corporation. I'm sorry, the Zan Consortium. And they'd like to speak to you about that one assassination that you promised in exchange for you, Salamiri. <sighs> okay, yeah, I, I say... Um... Uh, yeah, all I need is a, a, you know, a file. Send me a file. Uh, so, yeah, you're texting that? Yeah. All you I need get an I'm immediate reply like, back. Me, that, you get an immediate reply back that's like, yeah, we don't do business over the phone. Come see us in person on Naboo. Can I send this Matros of the Yellow a, a message real quick? Uh, yes, but I want to figure out what's happening with Toby. I tell him it's oh. going to be about a week, uh, because I'm in I'm in space right now. 
Okay, uh, you send that message, and about 30 seconds later, you get a picture. It's a Ysalamiri on a branch with a blaster mm. pistol pointed at its head. Uh, and the caption says, you've got three days. Tell me it took us less than three days to get it here. It took you a week to get here. Well, goodbye, pretty little pet that you spent all that money on, apparently. Um... I honestly, you know, far be it for me to speak on your behalf, but they're just being rude. There are certain limitations to hyperspace. They didn't tell you about this in advance. Yeah. The fact that you're off planet isn't your fault. You should just send them something back. It's like, come on, guys, let's, let's try and be it's professionals cool. Here. I'll just go murder Marvelous Mendo, whose fault this is. I Arthur just wants John Wick, the Star Wars edition, to happen. <laughs> I actually haven't seen John Wick. So really? I haven't seen it yet either, and I want to, oh, it's, but it's, it's not really on like fun. Netflix or anything. Action movie, so yeah. Um, um, yeah. If you want, I can help you negotiate better terms. Yeah, I, like maybe I would actually go to the captain because I'm. That's just the like, thing captain, about the mafia; they're not big on renegotiating deals against their favor. Uh, I'm not against their favor if they want him to actively participate in a, an assassination. So I go. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll leverage go to the needs captain, to work probably. both ways. <laughs> All right. And be I, like, look, I've, I've got this very expensive pet on order. You so, see. so you walk in on, on to, into the kitchen. I'm like putting a, like a, some pans on my head and being like, no, nah, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> I like put like a like a spaghetti strainer on them. It's like, my crew gets in the way. <sighs> this isn't working. Um, maybe an maybe an empty um juice jug, sir. Um, I like the whole I like thing. Pour, Cut little like, eyes out of it, right? I'm just like, no, I, I, I want to look cool, you know? Yes, we'll, uh -huh. we'll find you something. Don't worry. I mean, I guess you want something before we get... Anyways, I'm in a bit of trouble, you see. Um, I had something trouble. on order. It, just mm -hmm. a, a little pet I had ordered. Uh, Marvelous Mendo, great, great pet dealer. Uh, what have I told you about buying from people we haven't done business with before? It's unknown, um, man. It, I mean, he seemed like such a good chap. He did. What did Unfortunately, he listen. I could sell you anything in the world. Doesn't mean I own it. Let me guess. He doesn't have one. No, no. Well, he he somehow got one, but then he sold my debt to him. You know, I said I'd maybe I'd murder a person here or there for him in in trade. Um, oh. but he actually sold that debt to someone else who now has my lovely pet. Um, and I show him the picture, and they're going to shoot it if I don't. Have a meeting in them in three days. Okay. Um, a week away. But we can yes. Um, okay. Well, I'm a little nervous you... about chatting with them. I said, oh yes, uh, anything you need. Um, and they said, okay, th three days, you know. And I said, no, well, anything but that, because I'm not, you know, close enough to be. And uh, then they said this. I'm very threatened. I don't want them to kill it, but I want them to give me more time. Mm. All right. I'll talk to them for you, but only because you're my best friend. Thank you, Captain. All right, gentle touch. I'll uh, I'll give him a call after. Uh, so you're calling back the Zan Consortium number? Oh, why not? Okay. Uh, I don't even know how to describe this. Uh, do you know what a chiss is? Is that the guys with like the mouths on the side of their faces and like No, that no. Uh it's C H I S S. Uh if you're a novel reader, that's what Thrawn was a uh, half chiss. Oh yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah, so a chiss wearing like a black trench coat and a fedora with a feather in the band. Jesus. Uh, answers and it's Christ. just like Somebody stop him. <clears throat> Mr. Toby, I presume. And uh, you can no, see the light is... of the computer console he's talking to is reflecting off of his red eyes. This is going to go badly. My name is Captain Kidd. I am the captain <laughs> or the one that you have called Toby. I see. So you're I saying you're negotiate. in charge of this uh, proprietor of uh, dirty deeds. Look, let's be straight. He kills. He kills people for a living. So right. this guy like shakes his head and looks around. He's like, "No one has any business sense anymore. This is ridiculous. 
I'm yeah, not going to have you this said, conversation over this the holonet. The Empire controls this, you fucking moron. <sighs> Listen to me. You have threatened my friend. He cuts the communication off. All right, I, I, he zanes you. <laughs> I call him back. Okay. Uh -huh. He hangs up. I call him back, Arthur. Okay. He continues to hang up. I continue to call him back, Arthur. All right, if he doesn't you get, do it, You I'm... get, like, a text message from him that's like, learn how to do business, moron. Okay, I spoof the number, so it looks like it's calling coming from someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I text him back, Arthur, and I say, um, you know, hey. <sighs> That went out the window when you pointed a gun at, at your leverage over my employee. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you get a text message reply that's like, are you some sort of idiotic fixer? Give me a break. It's our product. If we shot it, there would literally be no purpose to that action. Aside from the fact that you want my employee to murder someone on your behalf. So he just, just replies again. He's like, it right out in the open. Are, he's like, God, are God. you not getting this? First off, I have no idea what you're talking about. And second off, if we own this animal, we have no reason to shoot it. It was just to threaten your employee, who is apparently not smart enough to figure out if we shoot our own animal, we get nothing. I think we're done with this conversation. Our deal is... We'll over. be back in a week. We can talk then. Until <laughs> no. then... When you say that, he's just like, this This is our last communication. Well, either way, uh, you've basically made it so that a droid who's very good at what he does, and I say that in quotations. Fine. Right? Um, <laughs> you know, because no one's ever read between the lines when they're, like, interpreting conversations between outlaws. I mean, fucking Jesus. And then I say... Very angry, so he will potentially make it his life endeavor to make sure that uh, you never, ever have the opportunity to harm another one of these beautiful sentient creatures. Right. When you send that message, your message is blocked by the mailer. And I'm like, I, I, I then I, um, I turn back to Toby, who's in waiting in the other room. I was like, uh, done. You have a couple of days. Oh, excellent. Thank you. You know, those things are very hard to come by, so... No, I understand completely. Um, so, you know, if they go back on their deal, they have no one... No, to I would just themselves. fucking kill them all if they... I understand completely. And I, and I told them back. about it, and they were like, oh, we understand. So. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Another room in the ship. Do you Kale need to make like... a deception check on Toby real quick? I think you do. I think you do, too. <laughs> I don't know if I mean, I would just believe anything you said, unless there Very was well. actual, like, telemetry data, like, oh, well, wow, you're totally lying to me. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a role is necessary here. I mean, I've been around you long enough to know that your left right. eyebrow twitches when you lie. All right, so... For what exactly 16 oh, microseconds. Okay. Oh, hang on. Uh, uh, so you'd be rolling against something of me. Which would yes. probably be very low. Probably my willpower or cunning, right? <laughs> like something terrible. Uh, I think it's... I think it's... What What's was it? It doesn't tell me on the like overlay. Normally it tells you what the opposite role is. Hmm. Vigilance? It probably does on the overview page for it. Hmm. All right. Um, Discipline, I think, maybe? No. Vigilance. Deception uh, is rolled against discipline. Yeah, discipline. Oh wow! Discipline. Literally the worst you could possibly so one have green, in one any green. game. So one purple. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I want to see you somehow bite this roll with a one purple against it, just because. <laughs> wow. wow! You did. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. I'm pretty sure I can re-roll this. <laughs> but I don't know if I want to. Not worth. Idea. I love the idea that. The, you can't lie to Toby because you know each other so well. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't lit on that. I know he's lying. So yeah, with that many advantage, you know that he's lying, but you're very good natured about it. You're just like, oh, he was lying to protect me. That little sloth creature is definitely dead. Yeah. Okay. 
It's so sweet of the captain after totally botching that situation. I understand, though. I'm like, oh, he just wants to protect me, you know? It's for my own good, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> lies aren't inherently bad. Uh, <laughs> the oh, God. That make our characters, you know? <laughs> Uh, so now that that situation's over with, I want to hop over to Zane. Zane, you're piloting when you come out of hyperspace. Uh, right. There, Sounds there like is um, the following ships are currently in orbit of Commodore. Uh One super class star destroyer, uh, seventeen imperial class star destroyers, four victory class star destroyers, uh, and about two dozen Corellian blockade runners. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, we just keep flying. Oh, wait, wait. I mean, Did you say two dozen blockade ships? Yes. I mean, that sounds like what a planetary siege. Or am I misreading the Corellian blockade, blockade runners are used as light cruisers for the Imperial fleet. Uh, okay. So they're used to like hunt down pirates. Cause Clarifying question. That's still <laughs> a lot of ships. Uh, is yes. everything okay? Uh. But are you asking who are you asking that to? I'm asking that out of character as a player to the GM. Uh, That's because, a lot of ships. Yeah, um, because Caleb is in a room, not in the situation with the pilot. So he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm sure everything that we didn't plan is going well." Yeah. So Zane, what's up with you? Now that you see that there's a ton, there's like an entire Imperial Armada out there. Um. As far as I know, this is pretty standard. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna. I flick on one of Toby, uh, Toby's, not Toby's, uh, Thor's uh, cigars. Mm. Light that bad boy up. Put the the boots on the the top thing. I like that. And uh, just he accidentally left some of those behind. And yeah. just flick on the com pad and go. Uh, We're about to reach the. We're about to reach the ship full blockade of Commodore. Uh, the weather at Commodore and the central horizon is going to be about 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. For those, all of you who are pussies out there, that's about 10 degrees Celsius. Um, though I don't care to admit that that's actually true. Uh, yeah, however, yeah, we're going to fly uh, <laughs> on, 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 straight, on <laughs> straight to the area of which we're going. Uh, please put your seats in an upright position. Cap all the gin bottles that you have in the location of your reach, and uh, be sure that uh, Niall is not on board. I like start capping all the gin bottles that are around me because there happens to be a lot. I just keep flying towards where we're coordinates going. So, uh, Caleb. Hi. You've been doing some meditation, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I, after the exchange of we're not going to plan, Caleb was like I'm going to meditate or I'm going to lose my mind um, so he went to, to meditate for probably the majority of the journey so uh, yeah. I, while we're flying out of this now and I am in full bed to the bone moment I am going to flick on the comm pad uh, feed into Caleb's room just so that he hears bad to the bone over and over again and like Zane drunkenly going banana <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't sing the lyrics. He sings the guitar. That's <laughs> that. So Caleb, while you're meditating, um, <laughs> it's the bone. You get, you, you, you get have to have a, a, a force vision, like one we, that we've had before, and it's on the planet Tython. Uh, it's in the same room we last saw younger Caleb and younger Weequay in. And in the background, uh, we still see Toby D, the janitor bot working to clean up another very similar looking mess. Weequay is about 10 years older now uh, and has the like Padawan beads still in his hair. That means Toby was our fucking bitch for a long time. God, you guys are... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just giving you a hard time. I was a faithful servant droid. You mean? Not even yeah. what I'm worried about. Anyway. Um, yeah, so Weequay is just like, <clears throat> Master, 
I do not know why the Jedi Order continues to refer to the Quay as the Force. As is set down by the Quay, the Quay is obviously the Quay. <laughs> quay, quay. Their, their racism towards the Quay is obviously why I have not been promoted to a Jedi Knight. Caleb? Oh, you want me to respond? Okay, I'll handle yeah, that. Yeah, we're doing the thing. Um, you know, role playing, thing. playing the game. Yeah, this is the thing. Playing the past, which is an interesting part of it. Uh, we, Quay, you must understand that uh, the Force has had many names for many people. I do not believe that the Jedi Council is inherently racist. Just a little. So, we, Quay, like, kicks a rock, uh, and then the rock starts levitating next to his face, and he's like, Master! If I am not to be a Jedi Knight, then what is it we're doing next? You said something about a research opportunity. Yes, Wee Quay. Well, if you're not going to be going off on your own, then I suppose I could definitely use your help. I would be happy for you to accompany me to, to Thylon. We're going to be undergoing some experiments. With the uh, Quay, as you say. Do you want to have that thing happen now? Sure. Okay. Uh, and as the... Uh, we're ha I'm having the flashback, and we Quay is there, and I'm describing this Tylon thing, and, and as I'm meditating on that, Caleb is thinking... Okay, well, this is some progress because this is what Wee Quay told me about. This is, I'm actually seeing something that this is, is relevant. This is after I was a holocron. And walking through the image is fucking dark side, Caleb. And he says, Curious, I see. And Caleb sort of pauses for a moment and realizes that this isn't a vision and he's actually interacting with the forest ghost of Darth Balak, as the chat named him, which is great, but is not his name. Um, that's perfect. You should keep that name. Why would you um, He's not a Darth, so that's the problem with that. You can still call him, like, Emperor Balak, Balak then. Yeah. Evil Balak. <laughs> Balak. Be gone from me. Balak, Balak. And you wish to know how you fell to the dark side, don't you? I do not wish to hear that. My shame is great enough as it is. I do not wish to linger on it. Be gone from me. Of course you want to know. We were once the same man, remember? Your curiosity is too great. Your need for preparation is too great. Preparation. Haven't we always said to the younglings that a mistake is only a mistake if you do not learn from it? You do not remember why you were made, do you? I sense that you are barely whole. More whole than you, Shade. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> of course. You see, it was on the planet Antioch. That's where it all started. There was a great turmoil there. The Jedi Council foresaw a great tragedy would take place on that planet, and its population of innocent civilians would somehow be involved in unimaginable suffering. It was decided that we would go in full force to protect them. I had never seen Master Yoda so unsure of a course of action. It filled me with great unease, so I made you. I made you so that if I did not return, you could finish giving our wisdom to the younglings, to finish guiding Weequay especially. And at this, uh, Caleb's like, oh, man, I guess I can... Uh, sort of like is... No longer trying to force him away. I sense sincerity in you, Shadow. 
And Balak continues, Master Yoda was right to hesitate. Antioch was a bloodbath. It seems that we had caught a massive insurrection off guard. Antioch was to be the launching point of an invasion of many worlds. It was the first target. They had not anticipated the Jedi's foresight. We had not anticipated an assembled force meant to conquer many worlds. With no fleet of ships to support us, we could not retreat. We were stuck on the planet, and our only hope was total victory. We cut through their forces for days, beyond counting, blurring together on a world where the sun never sets. Our meager numbers were linked and empowered through battle meditation. But that was the problem. You fought for days? Could there not have been peace? Was no attempt made to negotiate? To this day, I do not know what hatred drove this insurrection, but it was blind and full of rage. When his men began to lose ground to our small numbers, their general, I do not know if it was out of spite or if he knew what it would do to us. But tell me, Caleb, do you know death? I have lost many in my travels, of course. Before and after this holocron, you know that much. Ha! <laughs> you do not know death, holocron. Not as I have known it. When the general was backed into a corner, he ordered the extermination of the population of Antioch. Their ships and artillery bombarded settlement after settlement for days. It is an extremely inefficient way of slaughter. Many took days to die from their wounds. Others starved to death in the wilderness when their supplies were eradicated. And through it all, Every Jedi on that planet. You see, we weren't just linked to each other through battle meditation. We were linked to every mind on the planet. We could not sever the link or we would collapse from exhaustion. And so instead, for days on end, we felt every death of the 15 million innocent lives on that small planet as if it was our own. Our mouths dry from thirst as though we were expiring in the waste, our limbs weakened from blood loss, as though they were drained of their wounds. Our hearts shattered as younglings watched their parents die in their home. My word. I... So you see, Holocron, you know nothing of death. In the end, only a handful of us survived. Only a handful truly knew what death was. And we swore that this suffering would never befall anyone ever again. And uh, Balak continues, but it gets distorted and distant. And Caleb breaks off the meditation like you like startling from a nightmare and a sweat in his room as he cuts back in and da -na 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 -na. <laughs> so yeah i think that's a good time to draw everybody back into the conversation since now there's this sick uh zane guitar solo happening on the bridge and you just heard that there's an imperial armada over the planet what do you want to do now uh well I finished taking I finished writing my message to um <clears throat> Matros and I'm just like I'm sorry I, uh, I I don't like uh soliciting new religions and I send that to him and okay. uh and, yeah and I'm just like oh, good luck uh, good luck with that stuff and and it's like man I get so much spam these days it's crazy. And, uh, yeah, and then I, I go to the cockpit and I see uh, Zane just, I don't know, doing what Zane does. And I sit next to him and I'm just like, so that's a lot of ships. 
Uh, I would guess this is like a Class B fleet. But we're fine, yeah. right? We don't have anything illegal. Yeah. I'm just like, hmm. So, uh, we're going to probably go onto the ship and do some, you know, shooties. Maybe. Or maybe not. I don't know. Oh, is In that what case... you guys decided? <sighs> yeah. I, fi I figured you need, like, a, you know, a little retreat. Hey, we're just going to wing it. You know? Just going to wing it, you know? Just gonna Whoa, go Toby. Wait, when did you get here? Whoa, Toby. When did you get here? Like, a while ago. Oh, okay. Um, anyways... Yes. Uh, the door opens and Wait. Caleb walks in and sweaty he lines for an unattended bottle of alcohol and takes a drink. <sighs> and and I, I just like we all like turn in our seats and we like, you know, just look at Caleb just going like, you know, necking a bottle and we're just like. And then we all just turn back around to the front of the ship and just be like. So yeah, what are we gonna do? About, like... <laughs> if fly casual, you know, just act act normal. Oh, I'll fly casual. Got it. Got it. Nope. Right. Hold on. <laughs> and, I, and I like twirl the chair back around. And I stand up, and I grab the bottle and I shove it back into Caleb's chest. And I go, drink. Oh, we're going with the we're going with the drunk homeless guy. Got it. All right, it's a good plan, Zane. Always thinking. Always thinking. Okay, uh, you get a a message uh, from the Bureau of Spaceships and Services, the BOSS, uh, asking for your flight plan. Your credentials and your cargo. Okay. Um, I said this was a place where people just like went on vacation, anyways. Yes. Yeah. I can't, I say we're here for a company retreat. Um. And that uh, our crew consists of Captain. Um, Oh, God, I, I had a name for my new uh, my new persona. I was like, ah, oh, what was it? Captain Kidd. Captain Kidd, but I had the a... The Mandalorian. Person. He was Australian. Yeah. Uh, his name Australian. was... Uh... Oh, no, I've forgotten it. Uh, I'll just say Captain Kidd. Um, Toby, did you come up with a new name? Uh, No. Okay, uh, T-O-B-Y, uh, Medical Droid, uh, the Kraken, um, PMC, and uh, Ray's Navar. No, we're not Ray's Navar. Did you come up with a different name, Ray's? Uh, Raven Izar. Raven Izar, um, political <laughs> advocate and drunkard. I'm sorry, did you actually include drunkard as <laughs> this title? I did, yes. <laughs> Those of you playing at home will notice that I just put the name backward again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the the systems analyst you're speaking with is like, one second, running that through our database. What did you say your purpose on Commodore was, Captain? Uh, company retreat. Company retreat. And what company do you represent? Um, Raid Star. Understood. You, you, uh, you can't just you can't, you can't just tell bureaucrats a fake name of a thing. You just say, "Oh, it's my personal, you know, company." I just ship yeah. things from my ship. It's like, oh, if you look it up, it's just. It probably won't be registered because that's just what we call ourselves. We just sort of like, you know. So when you say Pretty that, much. the bureaucrat raises his glasses and says, I'm sorry, did you say your company is unregistered? Well, it's more of a personal name. It's just for what we call our crew, you know. Kind of like if you're making an indie game and you just kind of came up with a name for your company and it didn't actually mean anything. <laughs> so when you say that, the bureaucrat's just like, you're saying you are not registered with the Imperial Bureau. 
we're just a crew of people, you know. We just like to call ourselves something, kind of like a circus. I see. Hmm. Captain, are you a freelance mercenary? I am a Mandalorian. So yes. I see. You could have just said that up front. Understood. I'll be marking you under the box for Mandalorian. My apologies. Our relationship with your people has always been one of honor. I know. I just don't like saying it because, you know, goobers and stuff. Yes. Right. He puts his, puts his glasses down. Goobers and stuff. Quite. I'm sorry. I, I dipped into my Mandalorian a little too much there, mate. Uh <laughs> You know, it's it's just a it's just a local <laughs> local term junk. we have uh, that we uh, we we call just about everything. You know, it covers a wide spectrum of uh, of things. You know, top to bottom, A to C, that's Z, because Z's the last one in that language. You know, bunch of stuff. Don't worry about it. Just <laughs> Your papers seem to be in order, Captain. No issues here. Fantastic, mate. You have yourself a bloody beaut of a day, huh? So he transmits you a landing path. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> one that steers you very wide of the Imperial fleet. So Arthur, as soon as that calm cuts and Caleb sees the sky filled with an armada of ships... Uh, he says, so are, are we still just running, just flying by the seat of our pants on this one? Out is always better than in any way. I mean, we point up, uh, light speed, go. You know, it's not like we have to get, it's not so hard to get past. It's, there's a lot I of mean, space. I'm, when you're going up, when you get to the planets, you have to go, they can stop you getting to the one place, but when you have all of the places that you can go to, it's harder for them to stop you. See, ah, well, and I'm just... Toby can do a million calculations a second, so I would listen to what he has to say on the subject. I... You know what? Uh, all right, fine. We're just going to fly by the seat of our pants on this one. Um... Just have a few more drinks, you'll be fine. I'm not going to... That was, I, I, that was Ray's. He, he Look, you don't have to excuse being drunk, all right? Everyone drinks, except for Toby, because he's not biological. It's okay, Toby, I understand. Anyway. But if he uh, could drink, he probably would. Isn't that right, Toby? I mean, I, I just would highly recommend that if anybody has any valuables that they are really cherished, they actually take them with on this one, because we're never seeing this ship again. Probably gonna end up in an imperial prison. You know, you can stick it all up your. Again, that'll work, right? I so, a lot of things fit up there, but not everything fits up there. As you enter landing sequence, Zane, you can see that the three starships in front of you uh, all appear to be like. Um, when Cutting someone takes a super old car and like refits it with a new engine. Oh, yeah. And tries They're to make rot it, it like, out. Yeah. So what's happening is there's these, like, clunkers that have been refitted as, like, hot rods. Uh, like, 30, 40, 50-year-old ships. And they all have a person with a harpoon gun hanging out the back end of them. Uh, and an Imperial, like, Beaver. skip ray uh, blast boat is pulling up against, like, next to them and is broadcasting a message to tell them to stop cricketing. Uh, and that they need to land immediately. Did we just enter redneck space? Yes. It, it's I reversed. mean, so so they're doing the thing Zane did when he when he went up against Skate. Oh, they're oh, doing that's it what, intentionally. That's what you're getting at. Yes, they're oh. doing it intentionally. They're like windsurfing behind their spaceships, and the cops are throwing up and being like, "Land sport. the ship immediately!" That's amazing. Wait, wait. <clears throat> so they're getting in trouble. Yes, for cricketing. Uh, I try to get like a good angle recording, uh, and it's, then I yeah, will just... it's hard. It's okay. So uh, it's like f from Serenity, the movie, the Firefly movie. How anytime they do like an inside the ship angle, it's all shaky and stuff. Mm. 
So you've got like shaky cam of like a guy that's like, "Ah, oh, this is awesome." Okay, and then and then I just email that to the ship. Which ship? Just, the, the the ones that they were hanging on. Just courtesy. Oh, you're like sending that. You're, yeah. you're emailing them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like you get a, a tech. You could see someone like text messaging with one hand, and like he almost lets go. He's like, ah. And he's, he's like, thanks, dude. Yeah. Like that is amazing. And I wonder what they call that. It's called cricketing, bro. <laughs> it's all the rage on Naboo. The Gungans invented it. Oh no, they didn't. Lies, slander, and calumny. <laughs> yeah, ghost riding the whip. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's amazing. I watch as they like surf and get pulled over. Yep. <laughs> Other than that, uh, unless you want to do anything, Zane, you land are these the... are these the non are these non imperial ships? Uh, the ships doing it are like civilian vessels, and they're being like pulled over by an imperial gunship. Yeah, they're gonna get a ticket. Oh yeah, they're definitely getting ticketed for tricking it. Oh. <laughs> Zane stands up and raises his hands and he's this is the dumbest goddamn shit I've ever seen. This uh, is... Didn't you do that a couple weeks ago, though? Yeah, but when <laughs> I did it, it was... It was awesome. And now it's like a game and they're all tricked out and they don't need... Listen, uh, I understand is... that like sometimes people take planking to dangerous levels, but... You can't say you invented this. Clearly, he he just said. I don't even system. care if I invented this. My point being is that this is probably the dumbest goddamn shit I've ever been a part of, and I've okay. been a part of some pretty dumb shit. Like when you invented cricketing. Like standing in this room with any conversation with you, for example. Eh, hey, don't worry about it. You'll get over it. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm just gonna throw this out there, but the universe is far more serious than this, and this. It's some lunacy bullshit. Now, Maybe for some he's reason, doing it because he snapped, and then you know. Yeah, for for some goddamn dumbass reason, I'm gonna walk in this other room and eat some Vader Rose, and uh, this is the universe that we live in now. So, uh, welcome to the stupid shit. And I walk down the hallway and eat some Vader Rose. Like do every so, do we at least wall? have like a dock number where this ship is parked? Oh yeah, it's docking bay ninety four, of course. And we're, we're parking park in, in Docking, Docking Bay 93 or whatever? No, you're yeah. parking in Docking Bay 94. Oh, okay. So that's perfect. So we literally just walk out, walk over. Oh, start... you mean, oh, you're asking for where the ship that you're, you're trying to find on planet is? Yeah. You have no idea. Oh, excellent. Well. Uh, so Zane, as you're walking back to the mess hall, the panels on the wall next to you have heard you say the key phrase Vader O's. And Jesus. as per the special programming Dave asked me to install on the ship two weeks ago... Uh, uh -huh. As you walk by, each one has a Vader Rose commercial that pops up as you walk past. Heard you had some Vader Rose. There you go, mate. Here you go. Have some Vader Rose. There you go, mate. Here you go. You heard you had some Vader Rose. There you go, mate. Vader Rose. Vader Rose would like to apologize for any racism. Did you know that Vader Rose is a part of this complete practice? So many Vader Rose get left on the floor every day. Imagine if you put them all up and put them inside a barrel. It would have been like floating. You have a digestive tract. Please stop. Put Vader Rose down your digestive tract. Please stop. <laughs> We've lost control. I shoot every I shoot every single goddamn one. No, don't shoot my shit. <laughs> I'm going to ask Swarg, are are you seriously doing that or is that a joke? Everything Zane does is serious, Arthur. Okay. Unlike Vader well. Rose or cricketing. So every few seconds, Coral, you hear like a new uh, and you're getting oh you're getting God. internal sensors indicating <laughs> that the ship's circuitry is taking damage. Uh, I'm uh, talking that way. But yeah, Zane, you pull yourself a nice, delicious bowl of limited edition chocolate. -based I rice. definitely don't do that now, Arthur. Yeah, you try to leave the kitchen, but you can't. I go to the cargo bay. Mind. Okay, inside back. the cargo bay, there are, of course, large stacks of Vader hose <laughs> because Coral has them everywhere on the ship. Uh, um, do they perhaps on the side of them have, like, targets painted? Because that's where you practice your shooting. They're like, like even if you destroyed all the Vader's on the ship, there'd still be Vader's on the ship, right? 
What are you doing in the cargo bay, Zane, now that you've landed? You I am crazy. It makes it fully, and I am uh, hoisting the body of the beautiful goddamn Sam uh, up the pulley into the air over a box of Vaderos. Uh, I'm so sorry, that no, body, I, that I body was ejected you... out the airlock, by the oh, way. It was ejected? Who ejected yeah. that body? Wrath cleaned up your room and took the body out. <laughs> I'm going to hoist Wrath over the box of Vaderos. Okay. And so, I'm gonna drop so as you're doing that, Wrath is just like, I'm sorry, Day. Uh, I'm sorry, Zane. Please let me down. I need to perform my shipboard duties. Nope. Uh, this is part of the ship that you're in now. All right, Toby, you get an immediate text message from mm -hmm. Wrath that he's currently inoperable. I'm like, what do you mean inoperable? You clearly just sent me a message. I'm currently being hoisted up by my own petard. Um, what? What? Uh... You and Zane. Please come to the cargo bay. Oh God. <laughs> so as the as the minutes. landing the uh, the like cargo ramp goes down, Zane, uh there's like a young woman in like a luau skirt, like Hawaiian style, with a slightly Star Wars flavor, and she's just like, Hi oh, <laughs> Welcome to Commonor. He's like holding Come on in, you're hired. The crew is just like you, and I walk away. <laughs> so you're like walking down the ramp past her? No, I walk. I walk. You back go back into the box. ship. She's so. Uh, I think that scene closes out with you walking away, and she's like holding up a lua, and she's just like, <laughs> she's like what, "What is it called? Is that's what it's called, right? Like what are called a lay? Lay? Yeah, she's holding up a lay, and she's like, um, are you disembarking? And then you walk <laughs> out the room, and then I walk in and I like start like untangling like the tied up rope for the lever. Like, oh, you've got yourself in trouble now. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, so she's like, hi. Uh, is your owner around? I think he just walked out of the room. Oh, yes, anyway, is there something I can do for you? Just wanted to welcome you on your corporate retreat to Commonor. We have some oh. complimentary lays for you here. And I've like got some brochures of the lo up. local nightlife. I'm like, super suspicious, Arthur. Okay. What are you uh, Caleb for? comes in. And he, uh, and he, he are you he, are you checking for something? Yeah, I'm scanning to make sure she's not like a robot. An why, don't you go, why don't you go ahead yeah. and make like a vigilance check versus two purple? Okay. Cool. Damn, she's actually got like a lightsaber under there. Uh, two uh, purple. Arthur, yes. I would like Caleb to come in and to like accept the lay and do like like a, a little bow to put the lay on and all of this stuff and actually just sort of I would like to along. use my advantage to give myself cover. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I dive you, out you're of like, the way. You, you see something super obvious suspicious. She's, yeah. It looks like she definitely has the hilt of a lightsaber sticking mm -hmm. out yep. behind her belt. Yeah, I like dive like off the like out of the ship and try to tumble like underneath the yep. like extended You go right past her. And you you get cover, uh, so Ray's you're getting a, a like a, a lay put around your neck, and Toby just like jets down past you, and the woman is just like she like she gets shocked and she jumps back a few feet, uh, and just like holds a lay out towards Toby as like a shield. Uh, Caleb puts a reassuring hand on her shoulder and says, uh, "My apologies, our droid is." Mm. She's She'll been get a little you. frazzled she's, by the... She's a little trickster, she is. Our droid like has been frazzled out. by our long time in space. We are going to repair him as part of our visit here. Oh, uh, if you'd like, we can stick a complimentary restraining bolt on him and restart his programming right I told here. you, she's after me. She's going to get me, you see. That would be uh, perfect. No. <laughs> I'm afraid the captain has a bit of a thing about restraining bolts. It'll be fine. We can take, can take care of him. He never gets it too out of hand. Yeah, I remain here. The captain, the... I saunter down the, uh, the exit ramp. But do tell me, yeah, you must have uh, hot springs on this planet, yes? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, what? We we do have a number of warm bath areas. If you're looking for that, we don't yes, have I... any natural hot springs on Commodore. We do have a few simulated. Well, uh, I I would just be and and Caleb is just trying to like 
with with a hand on her shoulder, like gently guide her away from Toby and like maybe into the docking area and be like, hey, you know, what's your recommendation for a nice hot bath? Um, so are you also guiding her away from Coral as she's trying to hand him a lay? Uh, no, I'll let that happen. If okay, Coral's all right. Good. Yeah, she flashes you a smile real quick with Coral, and then oh, yeah. Ray's immediately leads her away. What is her race, Arthur? Uh, she is human. I'm okay with that. You, you've already checked that box. Look, wow. humans are a dime in a dozen, but they're still fun. Wow, a diamond a dozen. Wow. A dime and a dozen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's not the expression. <laughs> Amazing. Look, they don't uh, teach us the expression. Exact We're really <laughs> just setting a new bar for for anything involving women's rights tonight. So. <laughs> it's, <clears throat> it's the exact uh, opposite of what that expression is supposed to mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I pop up and I'm like, Captain, I'm almost sure that woman was carrying a... Now that you see her from behind, been... you can see that she just has it's, a imperial, it, uh, like code it's cylinder like a, rather it's than like, a lightsaber. Oh, oh, okay, it's a code cylinder. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I was, I was worried about, you know, sneaky. Uh, look, I thought the code cylinder was a lightsaber. I'm a little embarrassed. <clears throat> I would. Um, hmm, probably so after stop drinking so much. After, after I find out all about the hot bath scene on this planet, um, I just sort of like, well, thank you for your help, and sort of try and in, in end her job. You know oh, what I yeah. Mean? I, I mean, if like, you make any indication you're going to leave, she's immediately like, Stop. well, have a good trip. Bye. Uh, she's trying to definitely get away from you and the rest of your insane crew. Excellent. Mission accomplished. Ah. Uh. You do you know realize what? you smell like uh, meditation, right, Caleb? I'm sorry, what? You smell like meditation? <laughs> yes, yeah, that... about, about 12 to 18 hours. hours. 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. uh, when Jedi meditate, they control their bodily functions and cease the production of oils and dirt on their skin. I'm just bullshitting. Uh, you know, that's just this... None of that is You true. just get used to it. <laughs> I get... <laughs> in my luxury land speeder, and I say, I'm going to go take a bath. Message me when we have a plan or a coordinates or whatever. I'll wow. be there. All right. Are you really about to be that guy? You're about to Fonzie everybody? I totally Fonzie, <laughs> and I go take a bath. I think that's I the last scene is just Ray's, like, kicking the air speeder into high gear, and you just hear the whine of its military-grade turbo lifts. Is it and repulsors out of there. Hey, Zane, we're going drinking. Come. Well, there's no way that could end poorly. We need information, so the best place to do it is from drunk people. Bar. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be back in about eight minutes for another two hours of episode 21, a.k.a. the second-to-last Wargula episode, also known as the penultimate who knows what more terrible situations? Revenge of Slug. Oh, it's a cat! The Everyone cat forgot on the street. about a cat. Instantrapairhorn.com. Just visit that. Like I said, we'll be back in eight minutes. Please contain your excitement until we get back.